dead. He dead turkey. Please be dead. Oh, he, that's right on. Just got off the phone with the old Bee Masters himself, and we are both headed south. We got picked for a little public land draw hunt, a four day hunt. Uh, we booked the hotel for two nights because we're just going to get it done this weekend, you know. Y'all hang in there with us. Uh, we'll catch y'all back here as soon as we jump in the woods uh, and get the, get the scout. Welcome back, y'all. This one's going to be a good one. So y'all sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Spin around and go get the buggy. Come in here so we can press forward. All right, we're in here. First evening. Going to listen. We've done seen three or four. Big old hogs. I'm talking about Meemaw. Monster. We got another 45 minutes to an hour or so. We got a storm coming in about 10 o'clock. It's showing. Um, it comes through back up home, central of the state, and all that stuff. But. Um, we got a few hours to come in here and at least get a good gobble. Hopefully, uh, early. Listen, pin something down because right now we ain't got nothing to get off of other than a few tracks and some decent looking property. So. Well, it ended up being one of those mornings. We done a whole lot of walking, a whole lot of sitting, and a whole lot of yelping and hoping. But when we finally made it to the back side of this property, we laid eyes on these big woods, and we knew that if we was gonna run into a big gobbler, it was gonna be right here. I thought I may have heard one right here. So I got my phone out and sent old Horton a text message. Told him to get his ears on. Well, you know what comes next. We slip back in here the next morning to a safe but comfortable place. Found us one of them great big old swamp bottom oak trees. You know, the 
the kind that like to hug your hips. Ended up having several birds gobble this morning, so we set up in between them, hoping that they would play against each other.
Now there was a lot that started happening right here. Here one drumming over here. This hen started clucking and she didn't stop for six or seven minutes. I decided to check her temperature, but in my opinion, she showed no signs of aggression. She just wanted these old boys to know where she was at. But what it did start doing was making the gobbler behind us start gobbling a whole lot more. So we devised a plan. We stopped answering the bird in front and we started answering the bird behind us.
Now it took me a many a years to figure this out, but it's something we like to call being on turkey time. Now what you'll see right here is the dominant gobbler that is steering a subordinate gobbler in the direction that he wants him to travel. So sometimes when a gobbler answers you, but he's taking just a little bit too long to get to you, this is probably what he's doing. He's either steering a subordinate gobbler in your direction, or he's steering a flock of hens. But just know that if you'll sit back and be patient, he'll probably make it to you eventually. think about it overall I mean, anything you hoped it'd be yeah yeah I mean it was an awesome experience I mean like you said just the whole getting to see him you know strut you know yeah we didn't get the close-up gobble but I mean we had I don't even know three six you know at least six different birds gobbling this whole morning you know right. um, and these birds you know were relatively quiet once they started 
coming this way. You know, we didn't ever th we thought they were actually leaving us this morning. Right. What are the topics that you think ultimately made us successful? Well, one putting in putting in the work. That's not I me. Mean, every, every turkey that you're successful on, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, for me, is going to start with home right. I, I wouldn't hesitate to say we put four or five miles on our boots. I mean, we didn't even find this place until yesterday, and that was a know it was it was it was heartwarming to find it so, up until that point we were extremely discouraged absolutely. I mean we had seen a lot of habitat that wasn't turkey habitat it started raining you know well the night before we didn't hear anything yeah. we, you know we we scouted we scouted we scouted we didn't hear didn't really hardly see anything we didn't hear nothing you know we were basically going in blind that morning, you know, our first morning opening day, just again, silent, not hearing anything. Yeah. So that's discouraging. Then the rain starts, we got this big storm pushing in, and, um, you know, we chose to go back, take a nap, get a little rejuvenation in us. Yeah. And I mean, you know, when the, when the storm passed at 11 o'clock, we said, do we even want to go back? Yeah. Neither one of us really wanted to go. Yeah. We didn't want to go, but we both, you know, both had the same opinion without saying, yeah. we know we got to go. Yeah. And That's the only five chance we had at that point. Right. And, and so, you know, we come out here, 85 degrees, dying, hot, and windy. No, you can't hear nothing. Right. And um, just, just, I mean, this part of the property, it took me three years to to get, and, and I know it was about the same for Brett too. You know, but having these um, helping hunts where other people are with you, it, I mean, obviously it, it gets things uh, stuck in your mind that you see. But right. There's no better teacher than Mother Nature herself. Right. You know, right. Learning the hard way, learning those lessons, and figuring out why they did what they did. Harmony Game Calls, custom handmade game calls. You can find us on the web at www.harmonygamecalls.com.